Um, this will be starting soon. Okay. Um, yeah, looks like we are live. Hi Hello, there. everybody. <clears throat> Welcome Hi. to today's live event. I'm still trying to figure out my what you guys see of me here. <laughs> Look at the products, those are more important. If I cut yeah. myself off, I apologize. Um, <sighs> Hello again. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to today's live event. Say hello to us in the comments if you are with us. We hope to hear a lot from you guys today. And by you guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, I mean a professional photography audience. So uh, welcome to episode number two of M Photo Live. I'm very excited to welcome our next guest for all of you. Her name is Dory Howells. She's a co-founder of IPX Mastermind, a wonderful professional photographer platform that can teach you all you need to know about photography um, the business being, side the business, the business side. side of it yeah. and i'm just I'm being told that it's hard to hear me are you guys able to hear me i'm speaking now audience members can you let me know if you can hear me or not i was informed that it's a little hard to hear me do you you hear me i'm coming in okay i can, I can hear you fine i can hear okay. you fine while I kind of figure out what's going on, Dory, I wanted you to kind of tell us a little about IPS Mastermind anyway. So go ahead, if you could, just tell our viewers before we get into the interview, uh, to the live segment, uh, a little more about IPS Mastermind, what you all do over there and how they can find you. Sure. Well, um, as Eugene said, I'm the co-owner of IPSM. We go by IPSM and IPS Mastermind, and we are one of the leading photography education sites. And what we do, we feel we do very well is teach photographers how to run successful businesses using the IPS sales model. And a lot of times that sounds scary to people, but what we've done is we've boiled this down into a four part framework um, and lead people step by step in the direction that they want to go to build a better business. And you can find us at um, IPS Mastermind on Instagram, IPS Mastermind on Facebook, and also we love IPS.com um, is where you'll find more information about what we do. So that is that in a nutshell. Excellent. Thank you, Dory. And so better your business. And here we are talking about wall decor. So let's just jump right into it, Dory, if you don't mind. Wall decor is the topic today. What are some ways that professional photographers can use you know, wall decor to their advantage and can really make sure that they are getting the most out of it? That is a big, big question. So first of all, I just want to say that personally, I love wall decor. I, if you walk into my house, the first thing that you see is a giant canvas across the wall, actually two. If you go into my, um, into my, down into my studio area, you'll find acrylics and metals and those types of things that I offer to my clients. If you go in my family room, you're going to see a display of six can six pieces that are 24 by 30. Um, and I have another really big picture that I that I have in my dining room that is 34 by 70 of Seven Mile Beach in Grand Cayman. So what I display in my home are a lot of pictures of my daughter and a lot of pictures of our travel. So for me to say to my clients that I love wall decor, they can see it when they come into the studio that that I really want to do. I think that um, wall decor is an easy sell if you do it right. I love the idea that I can speak passionately about the fact that I, I pass my, my loved ones in the hall every day. And I remember those memories every day for me, wall decor is a way for me to um, see my memories every day. And that is how I really sell it to my client of my daughter at a certain point in time. And it's not locked away, you know, on a tiny phone or on a, an iPad or on a computer. It's there larger, sometimes larger than life, but in a, in a nice way that um, I can see those memories and have those great feelings because that's what I want my artwork to um, do for my clients is to come up, bring up happy memories, make them feel a certain way, um, make them remember the love for their family. And wall art is a great way to be able to do that and for them to have those um, emotions as well. So that's kind of how, no, sorry, Dory, but you mentioned how in your home you have these pieces of wall art. So you kind of you walk the walk and you, you know, so clients can feel that from you. And how I just want to have you talk about how important that is for other professional photographers to 
showcase is that an important thing to showcase what it is that they want to sell and to be able to exude to their clients that yeah this is something i really love i have it here i have it at home and so on and so forth like how important is that to ultimately get clients to be excited about something i think that it's so important and i truly believe that you need to be passionate about what you sell and so when i started in this 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 road of diving into things to display on the wall, whether they be small or larger size, I I wanted to experience that for myself. And the first time I opened up a piece of beautiful wall art and hung it in my home, I was hooked. It wasn't, I didn't feel like I was selling. And that's part of the, the issue that a lot of photographers sell. We're creatives, but yet we are like, oh, we have to sell something. Well, we want to stay in business. So yes, of course we have to sell it. And I believe that for what I offer in my studio, I need to be passionate about, I need to love it. I need to be able to speak with enthusiasm about the products that I sell and why I feel that they're important for my clients. So I don't really feel like I'm selling them. It really is more of offering a service that I can um, speak very positively about and how it benefits my life because i believe that i attract the type of clients that are like me and so if i am attracting those like-minded individuals if it's important to me i know that they're going to love it as well okay i want to take a quick second to remind our audience that we actually have a wonderful promotion going on at the moment so that you can familiarize yourself with wall decor products specifically ours if it's something new to you that's an 80 percent off promo you can read more about it by clicking on the link in the description uh, you will find it from n photo lab somewhere near the top i'm sure we'll have it pinned in a second uh, so we're talking about how important it is to be familiar with products and you know to sell what it is that you love or what you want to sell so you have to get it first, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when we talk, is there kind of a rule that you have, Dory, for kind of on the topic of having products and samples um, about how many or what kind of like samples photographers should have kind of in their studio? Now we're in a, in a strange time, maybe a lot of studio time is not happening right yeah. now. Yeah. But um, in kind of in general, if we kind of pretend <laughs> like we're in a normal, normal world for a second, uh, how do you see the, um, the samples? Is it something that depends on per photographer or is there something where you can have to worry about overwhelming somebody? How do you go about the having samples in studio? Is that something you should kind of update every now and then? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. So first, yes, I do believe that you need samples, but I know that a lot of starting photographers, that is a hurdle into opening their business because samples is an investment in your business. And sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I can't. I can't purchase samples, even at the great discounts that Enphoto offers. You know, if you're looking at multiple products, that could really be something that is a is what they view as a roadblock. So, for example, my first sales appointment that I ever had was I literally took things off my wall and I I took them to the clients and I let them see how lovely they were. I think. There's something about being able to see and touch and even, I know this sounds weird and people laugh at me when I say that, but even smell them so that they can get all of their senses involved in that process. And I think samples are so important because I believe you need to sell those samples or not sell those samples. I believe you need to show those samples before you get into a selling situation. So I believe you need to show those samples on social media. I need, you need to, show them displayed at the session. I have taken my samples and put them in the back of my car when I've had a session at a at a park with clients and said at the end of the session, give the kids their snacks or whatever and say, hey, I wanna show you a few things that, that you might be interested in um, before we have our appointment next week, things like that. So I believe in planting the seed way before you sit down in the sales room. And I believe that doing so, especially when you get into higher price points with your business, most people aren't going to come into my studio and say, okay, I'm going to spend $6,500 right now with Dory just at a whim that they had never thought about before. But if I had throughout the session said, oh, this is going to look great on your wall over, over the baby's crib, or this setup is going to look so beautiful in your, in your living room over the couch, 
or this is going to look, this is going to be a beautiful metal that can be displayed in your kitchen um, of a family vacation or something like that, that they took. I'm planting the seeds of them envisioning themselves on the artwork that's going to be displayed in their hall or in their hall or their kitchen or their bedrooms. And so once you start planting those seeds, they begin to see, okay, even though the sample may not be them, they can start envisioning themselves on those samples. So when you get to the sales call or the sales appointment, whether it's Zoom or in person, because I, you know, everybody's working a lot on um, virtual platforms, mm -hmm. then they've already started thinking about how these products can be incorporated into their life and incorporated into their decor. So it's not as big of a stretch to when they get there, they because they've thought about it, they're like, yeah, I want that on my wall. I want that to, de to be displayed in this way in my hallway or in my bedroom. It's not as big of a stretch as if you just kind of spring it on them when they come into that sales appointment, um, especially as you get in higher brackets of what you're charging. Okay. Um, so very important to plant a seed, as you said. And yeah. you mentioned Zoom calls. What are some, because I'm going to bring it back to here and now right now. Yeah. What yeah. are some things people can do to plant that seed with their clients, even in this environment where a lot of our viewers probably can't still even meet their clients face to face? I think, um, I think there's a lot of things you can do. I mentioned showing your showing your products on social media. I think that doing that with video, especially like with an with a piece of wall art that you can turn around and show them how easy it hooks to the wall, and then it has the bumpers in place so things lay flat, and they can see the beautiful reflective quality of those things. Um, doing that through video and talking them through those things, I think, is really very important. And um, like for me, when I get a new album, like especially the end photo albums, because they're so they're heavy and they're substantial and I want my my clients to feel that. So providing that experience in video, I believe, is really mm -hmm. important. And your videos don't have to be fancy. They can be recorded on your iPhone, have a friend help you out for an afternoon and or a family member and show those things. Also, make sure that you have some sort of piece designed that you can send to your clients between their between their session and their appointment so that they can see what all the options are. And I really, really find that the more I talk about the things that I want to sell, like wall art and albums, are those are the things that my clients are buying. So if you don't want to sell something, don't sell it or don't talk about it. And clients, okay. will, clients will really be, um, I don't want to say influence, but they will go with you because you are the expert that they've hired to help them with these family memories. Okay. I'm going to jump to the questions for a second now. Uh, yeah. To the combat story. I want to kind of maybe come back to that last point you ended on though. Um, sorry guys. I'm really <laughs> I'm kind of blind. So we're going to lean in to see the comments here. But somebody had a question. If you do ever do a virtual tour in your studio or apartment to showcase your wall art, uh, this is from uh, Kongunda. Sorry if the name is pronounced incorrectly. Uh, how does that? How can that work? Is that something you've done before? And how can that work for professional photographers who might be thinking of doing something <laughs> like that? I have not done a tour of my home just because I um, have to respect the idea of my husband that he doesn't want our show our home showed all over social media and my videos get viewed and, and I want to respect that in my relationship with my husband. But I will pull out certain pieces that aren't on the wall and show them individually. Um, yeah. So depending on your personal situation, if you want to show a tour of your home or anything like that, anything you can do to make it more personal, personable and also make it so you can be enthusiastic about it and positive about it is great if you're doing a tour of your home where you're like yeah this is the canvas that i got from or the you know beautiful diamond print that i got from in photo and it's beautiful that's not going to sell it right you need mm -hmm. to be like this i love this you need to sell it with enthusiasm and positivity mm -hmm. because people will be drawn to that um yeah. so that is that is my I, videos are great. That's what people are watching, and they don't have to be long. You could really just do a man of a wall with a voiceover posted to stories. If you want to do something 
more involved than that to maybe put on a website or on your you know promotional page on your web show, site showing off your products do it absolutely okay. do it. and like you say passion sells and i think that a lot of photographers out there are doing what you're suggesting anyway and that is they're getting what it is that they want to have and therefore attracting so i'm going back to this comment um, yeah, if you have a studio, I think that's a great idea to do a video tour of your studio. Yeah. And if you have like a piece of wall art hanging in your studio, you can just tell like why, just tell them why it's there, what it is, why it's there. And that's going to probably bring out the emotion and the passion of the piece and the product and the, 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 the sense of decor, uh, as well. But I'm all for that. But yeah, the passion is really what is going to sell people and, uh, just have what it is that, that you want to sell. Uh, no problem uh, for for paying attention to your your comment. Kungunda, should I say, sorry again if I'm getting the name wrong. Um, I'm gonna say Kun, Kunagunda, maybe. Kunagunda, Kunagunda. Kunagunda. Um, you can let us know if we have that right. We're trying. Yes, we're. Try I'm really trying. I really apologize. I have a really difficult Polish surname, and when I was living in America, it would get butchered all the time. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel your pain. Uh, uh me making a fool of myself up here uh but no problem everybody just pop up your questions on the feed uh if you have any throughout this uh discussion we're we're here for you and we'll be happy to answer your questions i saw another one uh from Michał chikainski he wanted to know if there is any kind of uh product that you might recommend this kind of universal appeal when it comes to wall art or is it something that's kind of specific to the photographer their genre and their clientele i don't think that I don't think that the type of wall art that you offer is specific to genre. I think it's more dependent on your client's design aesthetic. So you need to get to know your clients. Do they have a, a beautiful all white living space with very clean lines and lots of chrome and shiny things? My sister-in-law lives in a house like that. So when we talk about wall design for her, I might just, I would go with acrylic or a metal. Um, and maybe framed, maybe not, not really sure if I'm going with someone who is a little bit more, um, classic type mm -hmm. of aesthetic, like the more, the dye bond metals that aren't as shiny. Mm -hmm. And those are so beautiful in person. I saw those at imaging and they're just so awesome. Um, this would be that, a dye bond right here. Yeah. That might be a little bit more appropriate. So I really try and find out maybe at the session or in the questionnaire that I send someone before the session, try and find out a little bit about their design, like how their home is decorated. I've asked people to even send me pictures before of um, the walls where they want. And I do this usually is I have people send me pictures of the walls that they want to have decorated in their home so I can show them mock-ups and, um, that really helps them visualize that piece of art in their space. And we have, there's great programs now that you can, um, you can do it to size. So, um, yeah, the more you can do to get them to visualize that. But I find, I find their personal design aesthetic to be something that is somewhat important when suggesting products for clients. Okay. And you mentioned the word mock-ups. I want to bring this up too. Uh, we do have mock-ups available for our wall decor products. So just another way in this time when it's hard to be person to person, you can really have people feel themselves in the print products that you're trying to offer them. Because uh, you go on our website, you log in in our customer area, you can download them, they're PSD files. Uh, you insert your own images into our own product pictures. So we'll have a nice yeah. professional layout picture of this, for example, dive on print, but this image will be gone. You just put it in Photoshop of your own image, maybe one of the client that you're sending it to if they're a previous client send it on their way and again having them experience the product for themselves talk about how powerful that can be if you click on that link above where we talk about a promo you'll find out more information about those mock-ups as well and you're touching on another point uh that i wanted to get to because you said it a little bit earlier too of this idea of just um just having the confidence though to discuss things like design and uh, to have that confidence in your opinion as a photographer that your clients mm -hmm. will uh, be looking to you for some kind of guidance. Do you think that's true that clients, when they come to the professional photographer, they're looking for them to have this, you know, this sense of guidance and to, to really have an opinion on what they more or less should be doing? I think yes and no. I think a lot of people don't think they need that. 
but once they get it, they appreciate it. So um, we have a we have some resources on on the IPSM in our membership as far as um, acting more as a interior designer to helping someone um, really. Yeah do that and the thing that's nice about that is if you have someone that's been coming to you they have a growing family and they've been coming to you year after year after year if you start with a plan then you can incorporate all of their of their images as their family grows and have a beautiful gallery or, or that type of thing doing it as a one-off is fine but if you really want to evaluate the value of a lifetime client and someone coming after you, to you year after year after year to grow their um, their me their memories, I would say mm -hmm. their their um, history of their family, you can start with one piece of wall on the one piece on the wall, and I love the fact with Enphoto they have so many different sizes, the square and everything that if, even if they move houses it's really not going to disrupt that flow of keeping that going with them. So I try to approach my clients if it's not just a one-time thing. We're in a relationship. I'm going to see them, if not every year, maybe every two years for quite a while as their family grows. And we have kind of a, a plan that we put in place from albums. Like every three sessions, they're going to buy an album. And this is what we're going to get to put on their wall. So um, I'm not sure that exactly answered your question, but I do think that it is important to keep some of those things in mind that people are coming to us because we're experts. Um, and a lot of people think they can, that they are experts, but then once they really talk to someone who is, mm -hmm. they might realize how much they don't know and be open to your help. Yeah, that was kind of, um, I need to pause for full disclosure, everybody. I had to switch rooms the last second. I need to plug in my computer. Give me, give me one second, two seconds, and we'll come right back because you're right where I want to be, and we're going to pick this up. One second, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I hope everybody's having a great day today as Eugene does that. Those of you who know who I am, I'm located. Right. In Sorry about that, everybody. Um, yeah, I was getting a poor signal from the previous place and I had to switch it to the last second and I forgot to plug in my computer. All right. But this is right. This is a great place to be because we're talking about a lot of topics. I think that photographers yeah. are going to be really interested in. And you were getting to the point that I was kind of asking about where uh, don't be afraid to give your opinion. I think a lot of clients are looking for it. And I think sometimes a lot of photographers might be reluctant to say, I think this is what you can need. This is kind of what you need. But I want to come, you also got into talking about a plan that you often get your clients on and you make them know that you're not just a one time uh, stop, so to speak. What are some ways that photographers can build this with their clients and uh, how can they kind of incorporate wall decor into some kind of plan that incentivizes their clients to, to keep coming back? I think a lot of this is in the communication that you have with your clients. And it's very important to <clears throat> understand they are coming to you because they need something that you provide. All right. They're coming to you because they trust you, especially we find that um, I don't know how how big um, holiday pictures are in Europe or in Poland, but in the U.S. they're a really big deal. So a lot of people are coming to us year after year to get these holiday pictures taken that they can put on their holiday cards. And what I try and do when I know that they're kind of in that mood of only wanting like this little card picture, I try and expand their um, their thought process of thinking a little bit bigger and thinking about, you know, this is really telling the story of your family. And if we're going to be doing this year after year for a while, how can we make this something that goes beyond just a Christmas card picture or a holiday card picture? So thinking about those things um, is really important. And sometimes a lot of this just comes with, um, dare I say, experience or age in the fact that when you're first starting out, you may not really be able to, to add a lot more into your mind space of what you should be talking about in a session. You're just mm -hmm. taking your pictures, trying to keep everybody happy. And then you, you for, oh, you get home. Oh, I should have mentioned, you know, next year's session. I should have mentioned this. I should have mentioned that. And that's very hard to do. So you have to give yourself a little bit of grace on that. But as you get more established and you're able to um, absorb more and get on a sort of a higher level with your clients, you're going to start to see your clientele will change and they're going to start to appreciate you thinking long term on things that they're not even thinking about yet. And they appreciate the fact that 
okay, she's thinking how this can serve us, not just now, but how this is going to be what our family wants for the future. Mm -hmm. And by just opening those things. And then the way you nurture that is you make sure you just don't disappear out of your clients' lives anytime they inquire for a session. So you want to make sure that you do have an active newsletter list, that you do have active social media, that you um, maybe sometimes we had a great, great idea by one of our members who shared that what she did um, about three or four weeks into the coronavirus pandemic is she printed out coloring pages of like she did it through Photoshop and they were coloring pages of clients, children, like from their session, from their pictures. She made them coloring pages. And so she sent them to clients saying, thinking of you thought your child might want to, might enjoy this during this time. And that little things like that can keep you in front of the client's mind so that you're the person that they call. And I believe that email is really an important part of that. And a lot of people get caught up in like open rates and who's reading them and they make emails very long and complicated. If you make them short, they're not so hard to put together. And um, even if they're not opening them, they're seeing your name in their email box, you know, once a month or that type of thing. So who's going to be the first person that they call when they need their next session? It's going to be you. So there's a lot of things you have to do to nurture that in between. You just can't set it and forget it because people will move to other photographers. But if you do it well with a well thought out system, then you have someone who's coming back to you year after year after year and you can really help with um, their memories. Absolutely. That's a wonderful idea that the photographer friend that you had thought of. Wow, yeah. it is interactive and recalling it. It's, it's a fantastic idea. And yeah. now, you know, in this time that we are in, I think it's more important than ever to, as you say, to stress keeping in touch uh, with your clients, uh, find mm -hmm. ways to, to have that happen. Uh, yeah. Now, because you don't always have to make it, like I, I want to ask you, you don't always have to make it some kind of sales thing when you're reaching out to your clients. You can just drop a line yeah. saying, hey, how are you doing? You know, especially yeah. I think in these times, you can say, oh, are you doing okay? Is your family doing okay uh, with everything yeah. happening? That's perfectly yeah. acceptable too, is it not? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, I would recommend you don't make it a sales thing most of the time, um, right. especially with newsletters. If you're, it could just be current events that might, um, that are coming up that might interest your target market or things like that, that like, you know, I cater to newborns a lot. So I would post, um, I would post things like um, car seat checks for newborns. You can go in, in the U S you can go to a police station and they can check your car seat to make sure that it is meeting safety standards and educate you on that. They, there's a lot of different community events that you can just let people know about um, besides just call me for a session, call me for a session, call me for a session. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a, can I answer one of the questions in the um, chat? Is that okay? Yes, please, yes. Okay, um, ooh, this is another name I'm not too sure of. Is this Silla's daughter? Did I say that correctly? Shadr, maybe. Shadr, maybe. Well, I apologize if I, if I slaughtered that. <laughs> um, I find that I only have two people really on my photography side team. So I have someone who does my bookkeeping and I have me and I have to do everything else. But I've, a lot, I've adopted a lot of tools to help me along the way. Um, mm -hmm. workflow tools and specifically for social media, I find scheduling things out is my best friend. And if you look at my social media, you know that it's been a little bit lax lately because I haven't been scheduling it out, but you can find tools like later, um, Hootsuite, things like that, where you can, um, schedule social media out. The only thing that we can't figure out a way to schedule right now is Instagram stories. But everything else can pretty much be scheduled out. You can even do auto, automatic um, email sequences and that type of thing. It gets a little bit more advanced. But we use, I think um, we use later. And so I can go in and I can schedule a month of social media, take an afternoon and schedule a month of social media. And um, it's, it's ready to go. So there are tools like that to help with your efficiency. If you want to find someone who helps you with your social media, you can do that. And I always try and find someone much younger than me to do it. I don't know, um, Chilla, there we go, we said that, Chilla. I am a generation that um, is 
a little bit older than my target market at this point in time. So I want to stay up on trends and do that. So when I do get help with social media, I find someone who is the age of my target market. So they know how to speak to those people and know what to post. Just keeping that real there. <laughs> yeah. Can you just talk for a minute? I don't really know how to make a question out of it, Dory, but can you just talk for a minute on having kind of that confidence and that awareness to say that I need to kind of look for somebody else to take care of this part of my business to reach you know my potential? Because I think a lot of times photographers might feel like they have to do everything by themselves or that maybe they should do everything by themselves or if they're a couple that between the two of them it has to all be done. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to make a question out of it, but just to kind of expand on that, to not be afraid and maybe yeah. when to realize what are some signs to say that maybe I need to or should look to somebody else to help me yeah. take care of some of these yeah. aspects. Yeah, I think photographers have kind of grown up in the idea that if you don't do everything, that you're truly not a photo you know, a true photographer. Well, I like to take a lot of clues from other businesses and not just the photography industry, because I think the photography industry has a lot to learn when it comes to these things. And running a business is just like any other thing. Steve Jobs with Apple was not doing the accounting. He was not doing the advertising. He was not doing the social media. He was not doing the product design. He was not doing all those things. He that's just not realistic obviously for us a company that size but if you think of your small company as a photographer there's going to come to a point where you shouldn't be doing your accounting you shouldn't be doing your taxes so what's what can you take off your plate that um you shouldn't be doing and give to someone else so that you can free up your time to make the money to pay those people and still keep a little bit extra so as a photographer, one thing that I don't do, and this shocks many, many people, is I do not get totally caught up in the color correction and the um, calibration of my computer screen. I don't do it. I have good monitors. I know what they look like. I can check on my, I can check on many different devices how the coloring of my images go, but everything that I send into a lab, I let them color correct. And that way, if they get it wrong, I can go back and say, this is too yellow, this is too red or whatever. And I can work with that lab partner to make sure that we, we get it right. But I don't, I can't get bogged down in the specifics of those things because something like that, if you're not naturally inclined to want to learn how to do that, which I am not, um, that could suck up a ton of your time and be very, very frustrating. Um, another thing I don't think that you need to have, you can, you can have someone um, package up your orders. You know, you can hire a teenager down the street for whatever minimum wages in your area and or however that works in your country, wherever you are, to package up and take things to the post office to be shipped out or deliver them for you. There's a lot of things where you can create a lot of time efficiencies just by loosening control and realizing that it doesn't have to be you to do those things. You can outsource your editing. And I know this sounds crazy as a photographer, you can outsource your shooting. As a business owner, you can really outsource everything. Um, it just depends on what is not necessarily comfortable for you, because I don't, I don't like people to live in their comfort zones. But what makes the most sense for you is your time management and also for your business for what you need to outsource and get the help that you need. So, cause otherwise what'll happen is you'll just keep everything and it'll just pile on, pile on, pile on. You'll be frustrated. You'll be unhappy. You'll be overworked. You'll be stressed. And that's no way to run a yourself. That's no way to run a business as an entrepreneur. When you chose this for probably to, for more, you know, work life balance, um, to be able to do something creative, something that you enjoyed. And then all of a sudden you realize you're not enjoying it anymore. So outsource, outsource, outsource. Okay. Um, networking. I want to remind myself because I have a few things I want to say here. Uh, firstly, I want to address the audience. Yes, please keep the questions coming. Uh, generally, we're talking about wall decor. That's kind of our main topic. But hey, we have a lot of things we're willing to cover. Dory is a master. She knows so much about photography business and all this kind of stuff. Um, so we're talking about not being afraid to outsource. Okay. We've gone through a little bit about wall decor, about how to sell it properly and some things you can do to encourage people to, to buy it. Uh, you talked about outsourcing. I want to kind of similar aspect, go to professional network. And we're kind of in this yeah. idea of getting people to help you out. 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I wanna ask you again in the two realms, the uh, usual realm, okay, so mine is kind of COVID, and also yeah. then how to do it with this new COVID situation. Uh, so how can people, how can photographers help themselves and help their business by taking advantage of kind of their local professional network? The short answer to that is to get involved. Mm -hmm. Just, um, I find great connections when I volunteer for a, for a, um, a, a charity that means a lot to me. I mm -hmm. find connections when I go to social events of you know networking events that type of thing but I firmly believe that my business is an extension of my values and my heart mm -hmm. and what I find important and I mm -hmm. want to find like-minded individuals to do those things it would be very disingenuous for me to volunteer for an for an organization say oh I can't even think of one can't even think of an organization that I wouldn't like it wouldn't, hmm, I, I locked myself in a corner here. It would be, <laughs> me, it would be disingenuous, me, disingenuous of me to volunteer for an organization just because I wanted to get to know the people in that organization. My heart wouldn't right. be, I wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very um, pure of me to, like this, this past Monday, my husband, my family and I, we went and we passed out food at one of the food drive banks that we have here near my home because I want to help people. I want to help them have better lives and that type of thing. So I truly believe that you want to get involved in those type of organizations with people with like-minded like -minded, um, interests as you. Now, granted, a lot of volunteering efforts and that type of thing aren't available right now. But what, as far as, so you might be able, not be able to do big events, but if you do smaller events, what's stopping you from, from talking to the, the coffee guy down the street and say, hey, I would really like to chat with you. Do you have time for a quick phone call? You know, you can do a lot of things on the phone. You can do a lot of things through Zoom of making those more one-on-one -on -one connections that I think people are missing out on right now. So right. non-COVID, go to events, do all those things. That's type of great. With COVID, keep it closer to home, keep the phone between you, the computer screen between you, um, and go from there. And then also, you know, I don't think photographers ask current clients to refer them enough to their friends. And a lot of times to get a referral, you need to ask for that referral. And that's a, another networking thing. So if you have someone who's really, really enjoyed their process with you, then ask them, hey, do you know of anyone else who would like that you would think would like my services? I would love for you to send them my way. Just be bold about it. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. It's not going to come if you don't ask, right? Yeah, right. And, and coming back, like you touched on the confidence thing. Um, confidence, you get confidence by doing it. Like no one is confident baking a chocolate souffle the first time, even though you have all the knowledge behind it. You have all the YouTube videos, all the cookbooks, everything that you need, all the ingredients, but you're not confident making that big, that chocolate souffle until you actually do it. The confidence comes in the doing. So get out there and do those things. Um, well, and I just do it. Yeah, just do it. Just and don't be afraid. <laughs> Getting rejected is part of the game, and I look at it as a rejection is like it's just not right now. It's not I hate you forever. Mm -hmm. It's just like this isn't the right thing for me at this time. So maybe next time, and go from there. So I saw somebody ask a question. And I think this is a good a good segue because I saw somebody ask the question of what happens when a client would come in and they're just like, I can't kind of afford this. Is that something where you would you stay firm and say, okay, we'll catch up some other time? Like, how do you handle it, this situation? Do you just, are you just honest with them and say, we'll cross paths some other time? Do you walk down the price for them? How do you handle those kind of situations? I think oh. it's something a lot of people experience. Yeah, this is from Maria, and I actually met Maria in Denver. Thank you for joining us. It's, it's nice to, to see you here. Um, okay. So pricing is a really, a really tricky thing. And because we are in our own businesses, we can pretty much do whatever we want with our pricing. We can undersell our art. We can go at it, you know, all those different things. I think it depends. Um, I don't, when people come to me and say, I can't afford this right now, then most likely they're, if they're doing this at the very beginning of 
the inquiry process, mm -hmm. I usually say, I totally understand. I'm not the photographer for everyone. Can I put you on my mailing list for when I do specials or something in the future? And then that's usually it. If they're asking and they're doing this at the sales appointment, I know I have not done my job at the beginning of the process of prepping them of how much things will cost. And I take full responsibility for that. Now, I let my, my people know their pricing several times along the way. So it should not be a surprise when we get into this appointment and they have time, they have choices when they can back out before we even have the session. They've seen the full pricing. They know what's going on, that type of thing. So if we get to the sales appointment and say, I just can't afford this. Um, and I've had this happen. I had this happen with a client where they were basically adamant. I want an album. I want all the digitals. I want this wall art. I want this, 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 but I will only pay you. This is too much. And I will mm -hmm. only pay you this much. I think as a business owner, um, Allison Tyler Jones says this, I learned this from her and she basically just said, well, there's two options here. You either order smaller or order less. And that puts the choice in their pot there that lets them know my pricing isn't negotiable, but you order less or you order smaller. So say they don't want, you know, the 16 by say they can't afford the 16 by 20. Okay. Maybe they want the 11 by 14. Maybe they can't afford the 30 page album. Maybe they only get a 20 page album. Maybe they can't afford, you know, 30 digital files. Maybe they only get 10 files with that. Um, but I think it's important when it comes to pricing, if you are a professional and you're putting out your, your shingle that you're selling things at certain prices, you can't be negotiating all over the place when someone comes in and cries that they can't afford it. Um, and those are awkward situations to be in. And it mm -hmm. makes me mad when they happen because I know photographers are good, well-intended people and they're not out there to rip anybody off or put anybody in an awkward position. But it's not fair to my clients if all of a sudden someone pays me my asking price, you know, I have three clients in a row that pay me asking price, then all of a sudden someone comes in and says, well, I can't afford this. It's not fair for me to lower my price for them because these other people have paid my full price. Exactly. And if you offer a deal to someone, this is the thing. If you offer a deal to someone, they're the ones who are gonna go out and tell their friends and family how awesome you were and what a great deal you did. You just have to ask and tell them you can't afford it and that you'll negotiate with them. And you don't necessarily want a revolving door of those kinds of clients. And that's one thing I don't think people talk about is that those kinds of clients, those are the ones that will refer you. It's just like a client will always pick your least favorite picture that you've taken in their gallery and put that on social media. Always, it's always that's just the way that it goes. <laughs> That's, yeah, but I love that solution for that reason because it doesn't reward uh, or that's not the word it doesn't instigate that idea that people can kind of negotiate you down. You mm -hmm. are changing, you are giving them the option to change the final price, but you are doing so structured within your own boundaries. So it's not like okay, I'll take off forty percent, and then like you say, they run away and say, hey, I got forty percent off from Dory Hall. <laughs> so that's a brilliant. I really like that strategy because you do have to stand your ground to some extent as a photographer. Uh, that's yeah. very important. Um, well, you're a business owner. You have bills to pay. And it doesn't matter if the bill is sending your kid to ballet camp or buying groceries. But you have responsibilities that you have to honor as well. Absolutely. I want to come back to wall decor for a second. We'll yes. a lot of activity. I'll, I'll be sure to check that in a minute. But I want to go back to wall decor for a second. And if I may, Dory, I'm going to ask you kind of a very general question, if that's okay. Okay. And the general question. Um, and that is um, kind of how do you see it um, in terms of wall decor, you know, in the U.S., generally speaking, is, is bigger generally more uh, attractive? Like, do people want bigger more than smaller? Is kind of acrylic more popular than metal? Is it kind of really a client by client basis? I know it's a very general question, but a lot of people are asking something like this question. So I wanted to do my, my due diligence and put it out there. Um, do you see any kind of trends or is it really just specific for each client in each kind of location? I think it depends on your clients. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on, like we talked earlier about the design aesthetic that they have. 
Um, we know that senior photography is really, really great for shiny metals, acrylics, bright, vibrant pictures are great on those mediums. And then you have other softer pictures that are great, for example, for the dye bond or um, other products. So I truly believe that it's a personal preference. Now it used to be everyone, everyone, if they were gonna have a picture on their wall, it was gonna be a canvas. Canvas, mm -hmm. canvas, canvas, that's all we heard about. That's a lot of what people sold. And so that's, you know, but as generations, like you, we talked about, I'm kind of like older than my ideal client, as generations move forward, as they become more um, socially, social media savvy, as advertisers get the idea that there's more options available to them, as photographers get the idea that there's more options available to them, then you have, um, you have a better conversation to be able to have with them as far as what they want being able to be specific to them. Okay. Um, yeah. Kind of on this line of thought, and you can speak only from your own personal experience. Yeah. You mentioned how more products are available now. We're kind of getting to a new generation of clientele. Do you see a shift in preference in general of print products that people want? Is there like, for example, is it kind of shifting maybe from the album to more the wall decor or is it kind of staying steady? Do you see any kind of trend in that regard or is it still kind of, again, based on each individual client and the yeah. circumstance of the, of the... Well, I'm a purist. So I offer my, my albums, wall decor, prints in a certain different, you know, in different ways. All my wall art is priced at one price point so that people can choose the finish that they want. It's not about, it's like, okay, we want this in this size. Um, and it does, they're not quibbling over, well, a canvas costs this much and a metal costs this much and an acrylic costs this much. They're not, I'm not making them go through those steps. As far as what is preferred, I do think that a lot of that's going to just be, um, I think that your metals and everything are coming up in popularity and acrylics as well, but acrylics, because most of the time they sit at a higher price point, they're not right. the metal kind of give you the same look, but not right. really. Um, I think metals are starting to come up in popularity. I just think there's always going to be, it's always really going to be your, your, your client's preference. And a lot of that is going to be, especially when you have families that are just starting out, it's mm -hmm. like because I do family photography, um, especially for families, it's going to be a lot of what they grew up with, you know, what's safe, what's they, what they know, you put a picture on a wall, that's, that's what mm -hmm. they know. But you have beautiful boudoir photography and, and senior photography and that type of thing that all those different mediums can display all of it beautifully. Um, it just really depends. Like I said, getting to know your client, finding out what their design aesthetic is, finding out what they're truly looking for that will make them happy is really, really important. Okay. Uh, another question I remembered having seen from the audience. Uh, we talked a little bit about how to you know, really get uh, to know your clients, you know, when you can try and meet them in person and kind of be very outgoing and stuff like that. What about somebody who's maybe not so comfortable uh, as a photographer, like as somebody as a photographer who isn't so comfortable kind of meeting in person, can they follow a lot of similar uh, strategies, but do it kind of digitally and have a similar effect, or maybe over the phone and have a similar effect? Or how can somebody who might be kind of shy or more of an introverted photographer still make the most of their you know personal connections with their clients? I think um, when it comes to people being shy and being introverted, I think that we all have different different um sections of our personality so for me i can come on here and be very very outgoing for an hour you know or whatever time period but then later this afternoon i'm going to go in my corner and read a book or listen to some music or something so i kind of feed those different parts of my personality and i think most people are really wired that way you're not always an introvert you're not always an extrovert you're not always an ambivert which is kind of a combination of the two so I think learning, learning yourself and knowing, okay, if I go to this networking event or if I go to this, you know, the Zoom meeting or something like that, I'm going to give myself three goals to do. I'm going to meet two new people and I'm going to talk about, give yourself three safe things to talk about. And I'm going to um, show a couple people my sample album of my work. 
Just because you go to a really big networking event doesn't mean that you have to be overwhelmed with the thought that you have to talk to everybody. Give yourself manageable mm -hmm. goals that you're comfortable with. Say, okay, I'm gonna go to this event and my goal tonight is to talk to three people that I don't know. And guess what? After I talk to those three people I don't know and I've made those connections, I get to leave. I don't have to stay there for four hours. I don't have to stay there to talk to every single person. Um, a lot of times, also, which is so great, like with Meetup and Facebook um, networking things where you know the guest list ahead of time because people are RSVPing. You know, this sounds kind of weird, but it could be also you can use this to, to make the most use of your time. Go through and check out the guest list, see who's going to be there so you can you can pinpoint the three people that you want to talk to and you know a little bit about them not stalkerish where you know about their kids and that kind of stuff but at least right. who they work for and what they do right um right. and so give yourself these attainable goals that don't completely overwhelm you because if you're overwhelmed what you're going to do is you're going to hang out with the drinks or you're going to hang out at the corner um on your smartphone and it's going to be a waste of time so go with these things in mind leave your smartphone in your pocket or your purse you have a goal in mind attain that goal and then you can go home so for introverts i find that that is something that is doable for most something that doesn't leave you completely overwhelmed and you can make progress that way because maybe next time you'll be feeling good and like oh, okay i've talked to three people but i really want to talk to that person over there I'm going to go talk to them and you add more and more, but it's just anytime you want to do something that puts you out of your comfort zone. Like I said, the first step is you just have to do it. And if that, if three people is completely overwhelming you, but the thought of maybe talking to one, you think like, mm, I'm not talking to a stranger. I'm not really super comfortable with that, but that's doable for me. Then start with one and go, um, give yourself grace, but also give yourself a challenge and realize that you're not, you don't have to be there forever and you don't have to talk to everybody. So that's for in-person events. The same thing for like Zoom events. If you have um, different types of networking things, it's, sometimes it's safer behind the screen, but for some people it's not, you're still putting yourself out there and the, you know, confidence comes from doing. Mm -hmm. So you need to sometimes just take that, even though it's uncomfortable, even though your knees are shaking, maybe you're, you know, getting a little clammy or whatever most people aren't going to see it and you just go out there and you do it and i promise you the more you do it the better it will feel it may not ever feel fully comfortable but it will feel better yeah excellent advice it, it kind of does come down to that you, you have to do it um yeah. i want to i'm just going to throw something out there i think a lot of people are not going to believe this but i used to be terrified speaking in public like absolutely terrified <laughs> uh you know they, when i was going up through school they used to make you take these courses where at least when i went to school they used to make you take the courses where you have to go up and at some point give a, a presentation and i remember i was that kid who was, I was like no uh, no way <laughs> like shaking <laughs> but eventually you have to do it eventually you have to do it eventually i did it and here i am now like i'm just you know people are probably sick of me i'm everywhere so you're, you're everywhere everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And I, I want to say just one more thing too, and that is that people um, like I'm not trying to say I'm going to you know uh, be able to help all introverts out there, but I just have, want people who maybe are you know maybe a little like not so confident is to realize that a lot of that people want to know you. Like so, when you go to a social oh, networking yeah. event or even your clients, yeah. Yeah. they want to know you. They want to they want to hear from you. They want to get to know your personality a little bit, even if it's different, even if it's something that's not so outgoing that's that's cool for them still and mm -hmm. i remember that one time i was in a class and we had to give like a speech and it was like on a friday morning in college Ooh. and this was a time you know in college nobody goes to class on friday so everybody was like why do i even have to be here and i did right, my right. I, wrote it. I was i went to the podium and i was like all right i'm just going to go through my motions i'm just going to say my name is eugene I'm gonna ask you blah, blah, blah. but i was like no you know what? i have to be here everybody has to watch me why not make it a little entertaining that's what they, in this specific moment, that's all they could hope for. It's like, hey, at least make it nice, man. And so I decided to change it up and, you know, make it a little more, you know, nice than just me reading a piece of paper. People yeah. want to get to know you. If you find yourself in a, in a social situation, again, conjure up as much confidence as you have to put yourself out there. People are going to respect it. And like you say, I think the more people do it, the more they will be, become more comfortable with it. 
not that they'll ever maybe become some like celebrity or something, you know, being in front of the camera all the time, because that might not be who they are. But the more you do it, the more you get comfortable with it. And it can benefit you a lot as a business owner, uh, having that confidence and that uh, feeling like I can get in front of people and I can talk when I have to. Uh, it's, it's very, very, very useful. So here's, yeah, here's your next networking tip for the day is you go and you get one of these dream books from Enphoto. Okay, and you fill it with a variety of images from your um, from your business. You go to a networking event and you get it maybe in an eight by eight size, not the, the 12 by 12 size, okay? You pull this out and you start, people ask you what you do and you say, you know what? I would love to, but can I show you instead? And you start opening up one of these books. I promise you, Within five minutes, you're going to have five people standing around you, looking at your pictures, ooing and eyeing, and wanting to get know, getting to know more about you. So sometimes it doesn't even take you talking. That is a natural icebreaker in those types of situations. Take something like this, and I would, um, I would make it a compilation album of a few different sessions, so that they can see what you do beautifully and then you don't even really have to you're just collecting names and, and talking about something that you love at that point in time it seems very very natural so mm -hmm. there you go we have a few more minutes i'm just going to put out a last call for anybody still watching who uh, has a question wall decor or something else that they might want to ask um this is a great idea dory yeah such a wonderful idea dory that is fantastic um looks great um, so yeah, um, wow, I just, in my mind is hit a blank spot. Did I explode, it? Did I explode your brain? <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, it's such a fantastic idea, uh, again, to kind of get the conversation going and you can keep it on something that you know as a photographer by doing something like that. Well, um, look at some of our questions here. Mm -hmm. um, keep them coming, guys. A few more minutes left if you have a question about wall decor or something related to photography business. I want to had, had a question here. Mm -hmm. um, she says she's just getting started, which is great. And she says that most photographers offer packages when it comes to sell a service. Her question is, how do you upsell without seeming pushy? Or do you just let them go with the package of their choosing? OK, so my secret for this for pricing is that when I sell, when I have something like this to sell, oops, like this, this is a 12 by 12. So what I do is I put in my pricing, I put the eight by eight size. And if they want bigger, cause I want to sell basically a 10 by 10. So if I want to go bigger, then they, it's a natural upsell. Well, do you want the eight by eight size or would you like it a little bit bigger? And they say, Oh, we would want the 10 by 10. Okay. Well, great. Well then that's, you know, $300 more or something like that. So if you have your packages set up so that, they really would want something a little bit more than an upsell is easy. Okay. We do talk a lot about this. this is more of an advanced topic, but we do talk a, a little bit more about this or a lot more about this in um, IPSM. So if you guys aren't in our Facebook group or anything like that, make sure you go ahead and um, join over there. It's just at IPS mastermind on Facebook. But um, with the one with the trademark sign is the group, not the page, but um, if you put all this stuff together in a way that it makes sense for the upsell, then you don't feel pushy, which was the bulk of your question. How do you not feel pushy? Um, do it so it makes natural sense to do so. And it's just the same, you know what? Us feeling pushy is you feeling pushy. <clears throat> it's not necessarily how your client is interpreting that. So if you're coming into a thing where I don't wanna seem pushy, realize that that really is your personal issue to work through and your mindset you're offering a service to them to help them. Um, that is something that you can work on as well to get through some of those words that that can kind of make blocks for you. Because many times what we feel that come up as a, um, as like, it's so expensive. That's a really subjective word and expensive to you is expensive is different to somebody else. You feeling pushy isn't is not the same as someone interpreting you as pushy. So remember that as well. So I think that was the only one that I saw. Did you have any other questions? Did you get your brain back, Eugene? 
Yeah, I, well, I have a question because you gave a great example in relation to uh, the album. Do you have a similar technique for like a piece of wall decor or some kind of thing, including wall decor? Is it a similar idea or is there something different that you might try to do to not come off as pushy, but to try and motivate, so to speak, the clients to consider something better or sorry, bigger or more? So refresh my memory again, Eugene, what is the largest size wall art that and, and photo sells right now? Uh, 20 by 28. 20 by 28. Okay. So what I would put in the package is a 16 by 20. That's what would go in a package. But I would be displaying the 20 by 28s in my studio. Mm -hmm. And I would say 16 by 20 is going to be this big. Mm -hmm. Look at how, you know, it looks so much better in this size. What size would you like? And then we can then go from there. So especially for wall art, a lot of people would say like, oh, I want something really big by like an 11 by 14 for my walls. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys know that 11 by 14 is nothing. Like that's not gonna look good on any wall. So what I do is I, um, I, sh I show the bigger sizes so that they're not overwhelmed with them. They can see that it's not overtaking a wall. It's not something that's so huge that it's gonna make them feel uncomfortable. I've had people buy giant pieces of wall art of a newborn baby and the baby's head was like this big in the in the wall art. So a lot of times people, what they envision as being big is not. So in your packages, make it a smaller size, but what you show them is gonna be the bigger size and that's an easy upsell as well for your wall art. Um, because I price my wall art all the same, regardless of finish. Um, I just find that's easier because it takes that, like that calculator out of their head of, well, if I get a metal, it's this much. And if I get acrylic, it's this much. That way they get the way they get what they really want. It's one less decision that they need to make. I don't go into that as much. Okay. I want to, uh, well, yeah, I see a question. Uh, one big wall art versus two to five smaller. That's a question. Um, is that something kind of specific that you handle on a client by client basis? That's like uh, to client, that's specific to client. I, because me personally, I like the one big, like mm -hmm. I have 20 by 28 all over the house. Mm -hmm. Um, that's personally, me. that's what I show in my studio. That's what I, I talk about. That's what I'm passionate about. So I sell mm -hmm. more bigger pieces. If mm -hmm. you are a photographer that likes scrapbooking and lots of gallery walls with little pictures and that type of thing, you're going to speak passionately to that. That's what you're going to show on your social media, that type of thing. So you would probably find yourself getting more clients for the smaller pieces. It's not right mm -hmm. or wrong or better. It's just, it's what you attract and what you choose to sell. Okay. And that could come down to a practicality thing too. If you have a yeah. client who has maybe a smaller home with less wall yes. space or a bigger home with big wall space. Um, we talked at the beginning about showcasing this stuff, like in the studio and again, getting excited and passionate about mm -hmm. what you're selling and maybe going after what it is that you're excited. How about showcasing your products, like on say your social media and your website and things. Mm -hmm. Is it important for photographers who hope to sell product and sell a lot of it to be having those images and passionate expressions on their social media platforms and their websites as well, not only in the studio. Yes, 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 yes. Yes to all of it. It's all important. Um, I don't think my homepage on my website shows this now, but for a long time it showed, <clears throat> like um, you mentioned your um, wall display images that you have through Enphoto software where people can do mock-ups. <laughs> Yes. Um, I took a mock-up that I had made and that was the picture on my the home page of my website not just a picture it was a mm -hmm. picture of the wall art so I was showing them from the very first point of getting onto my website this is this is wall art like this is what I want to sell this is what it's going to look like displayed in your home I have a whole private page on my website site that shows all my um, products that my that my clients get sent right you know before they book so they know mm -hmm. what they're looking at um mm -hmm. and i do a lot of referrals so a lot of people are coming i saw the beautiful picture in heather's home and i want that for my family and so they're coming in too so but show it all show it all yeah. and not just the pretty pictures show the show the bindings show the 
show how well it's made, show the, the texture of the paper and people will be drawn to that because it's not something that they can get anywhere else. That's okay. the big thing. It's like, you can't go like here, Costco is really big and I know they're branching out around the world. So they can't get that at Costco. They can't get that type of book or that type of paper or that type of feeling from something that you go pick up at Costco. Mm -hmm. And that's what you really want your product line to be. You want it to be unique to you that they can't mm -hmm. get anywhere else and be able to show them what. Yeah, that's a good message to get out there too. Uh, sometimes I think um, when you're in it, you might forget what other people don't know who aren't in it. You know, and you're like, oh, well, they know that, but they might not know that. Like, that's not something right. that's not that you have. Don't assume. You cannot get. And I want to encourage all the professional photographers out there that now, you know, if you are in a part of the world, part of the world, where you're not really able to get out there and take uh, photos, or even if things are open, but it's still kind of slow, that's a perfect task that you can be doing is uh, mm -hmm. putting the, these things on your websites or updating yeah. them if they're a little bit older. Uh, try to make some content to educate your clients about the products that you offer. Yeah. You get creative in ways of doing that. But yeah, that message of letting them know that this is not something you can get anywhere else uh, and explaining the value to it, uh, of it to them. And absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic, Tori. That is absolutely yeah. wonderful. Um, okay. Are there any final questions? We've come up to uh, about an hour. Um, it was such a great time talking with you, Dory. Sorry, everybody out there for my technical <laughs> difficulties at the beginning. <laughs> Um, but the, wow, it was such a great talk. Uh, thank you everybody for participating. Um, we hope to see you uh, all in the future. Um, and yeah, Dory, just one more time, let people know where they can uh, connect with you and IPS Mastermind. Yeah, so you can find us in a couple different places. We're on all the socials at IPS, Master, or, yeah, IPS Mastermind, that's on Facebook. Um, if you're looking for our group, our free group for photographers where we share a lot of this information, you're going to search IPS Mastermind looking groups. We have a page and then the group actually has our trademark symbol. Um, our website is weloveips.com. You can also find it at ipsmastermind.com, but the other site has a little bit more information. I can be reached on socials at the Dory Howell as far as Instagram goes, or you can find me on Facebook if you guys have questions. I'm happy to help photographers make more money. That's what I want to do. That's what the, um, we just, we have a passion for doing that because we know that if we can make your business better, we can make your lives better. And that is something that is really important to all of us. So um, if you want to, if you're interested in joining our membership and you want a, a discount code, I can hook you up with that. You just need to send me a PM um, through Facebook or through Inst or Instagram, and we will get that out to you. No problem at all. So um, hopefully you can, come in and check us out as well too. So thank you so very, very much, Eugene. This was great. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, so much to talk about. We'll have to get, we'll have to connect again sometime soon. There's so much to discuss. Um, yeah. We still have enough time to get to everything. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Don't forget to take advantage of our master plan uh, promo, 80% off a wall decor sample, as well as our free PSD mock-up files for wall decor, but we also have them available for other products as well. So be sure to check those out. A great way to do business, even in this time when it's not so easy to meet people. Um, that's going to do it, guys. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for participating. My name is Eugene Negovetsky here with Dory Howell from IPS Mastermind. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.